Hey everybody, it's Alex, and I'm excited to talk to you tonight because this is one of my favorite weeks of the whole year, Thanksgiving week. You know, Thanksgiving has always been one of my favorite holidays. In fact, now it is my favorite holiday. You can take whatever holiday you have, Christmas, Valentine's Day, I don't know what your favorite holiday is, but you can put it up against Thanksgiving, and it doesn't even come close to the three F's of Thanksgiving, food, family, and football. You take those three things and put it up against any holiday, and I'm telling you, Thanksgiving is the best. I love Thanksgiving and spending time with my family. In fact, right now I'm recording this video in Crossville, Tennessee, where Allison's family lives, and I'm just excited for every moment that we'll get to spend together. You know, Christians should be thankful every single day of the year, not just at Thanksgiving or Christmas. Christians have so much to be thankful for. It's generally easier for people to be thankful this time of year, even people of the world. But for Christians, it goes beyond that. For Christians, we should be thankful every single day of the year. And when you read throughout Scripture, you learn why all these different reasons for why Christians should be thankful. One of those is in James chapter 1, verse 17, where we learn that we are to be thankful specifically towards God, that we should have gratitude to God for all the things that he has blessed us with. James 1.17 says this, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Like I said, it can be easy to be thankful this time of year, but for Christians, our thankfulness should be a little bit different because we are thankful specifically to God, and we should be able to step back this time of year and realize all the blessings that God has showered on us. Christians also are to be thankful regardless of the circumstances. When we read 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 16 through 18, it says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the Spirit. Now look, I know this year... Thanksgiving holiday is a little bit different because of the pandemic and because of a lot of the things that many families are going through. And when we read 1 Thessalonians, it can be difficult to, to hear what he's saying to us, to rejoice always and to be thankful in all circumstances. But because we are Christians and we have hope in a life beyond this one, we should be able to be thankful no matter what happens we should be able to pray without ceasing and rejoice always. So this week, take a step back and try to be thankful no matter what your circumstance is. Hey everybody, Joseph here. Now that Alex has shared a little bit with us about Christian gratitude, what sets that apart from maybe the ways that the world is grateful, what the Bible has to say about how we as God's children are to be grateful, now I want us to talk just a little bit about the effects of gratitude in our lives. The benefits to us of being thankful have been well documented. In fact, I read an article about this recently and it listed several effects, several benefits to us of being grateful. For one, it makes us happier. Thoughts of gratitude, choosing to feel grateful, produce feelings of pleasure in our bodies. Being grateful stimulates areas in the brain that regulate stress. Many of us have struggled with stress over the last several months, and experts tell us that choosing gratitude in our lives, possessing an attitude of gratitude, can help regulate those stress levels throughout our days. It produces resilience. Let me share a quote with you from this article that I read. Studies have shown that counting blessings was a factor in managing post-traumatic stress for Vietnam War veterans and an effective coping strategy for many after the 9-11 terrorist attacks. So gratitude as a practice has helped people overcome extremely traumatic events in their lives. Gratitude increases patience and self-control, and who among us couldn't use an extra helping of those two characteristics. Gratitude is good for relationships. Couples, good at exhibiting thankfulness. 
um, feeling grateful for their spouse and expressing that to their husband or wife, well, these couples tend to be more committed and more likely to remain in their relationships over time. So gratitude can help our relationships. More specifically, it can help our marriages. Gratitude can positively influence physical health. Dispositional gratitude, just having a, a disposition of gratitude, leads to healthier individual individuals, physically speaking. Gratitude breeds good habits. In one study, New York teenagers who were more grateful than their peers were less likely to abuse drugs and alcohol. So choosing to be grateful kept these young people away from harmful and destructive behaviors and habits. And finally, choosing gratitude can help you get a better night's sleep. In one study, adults with sleeping disorders who thought about reasons to be grateful at night. So instead of counting the sheep, they began to count their blessings at night. Well, they fell asleep faster and stayed asleep longer. So this proves to me that God's way of life, giving thanks in all things all the time, leads us into the best life we can possibly live on this earth. And of course, the most important effect of gratitude is that practicing it helps us become the people that God intended for us to be, formed into the image of his son. The effects of gratitude are far-reaching, but sometimes it's more difficult than others to really feel thankful and to feel that gratitude that we have as Christians because there are enemies to our thankfulness. There are things throughout our lives that try to steal our joy or steal our thankfulness from us. One of those is anxiety. You know, anxiety is a very important feeling. For years, it has protected us and still does when we are in danger. It signals that fight or flight chemical in our brain that allows us to, to get to safety when we need to be safe. But you know, it's not often anymore that we're running from danger, that we're running from lions, tigers, or bears, oh my. Uh, but we are instead worrying about money, family, uh, what we're going to eat, maybe our jobs. We worry about lots of different things that kind of take over our mind and keep us from being able to be fully thankful. Another thing that stills our ability to be thankful is envy. We are envious of other people, especially in the day and age of social media. Social media is, is tough because all we see is everyone's perfect life. We see their perfect families, their perfect brand new cars, their new house, and their, their family's smiling faces that we don't see what's going on behind. And it makes us very envious of what other people have. And instead of being thankful for what we have, we, we become envious of what they have. Another thing that stills our ability to be thankful is our busy lives. You ever feel like you're just too busy to stop and be thankful? We've got too much to do. We live in a culture where it's very task driven and we've got to get from one thing to the next to be successful that we aren't able to just stop, sit back and be thankful. It's easier this time of year because things are shut down. We're off work. We're, we're spending more time with family and we're able to be thankful. But as Christians, we've got to figure out how we can fight that enemy off and be thankful all year every single day. When we look into scripture and we read in Galatians chapter 5 or 16, it says, but I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Verse 25, if we live by the spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. The more we walk in step with the Spirit, the more He will renew us. And when He renews us, we're able to re get rid of some of those enemies that keep us from being thankful. Worry, busyness, envy. And we're able to step back and truly feel thankful. So we've talked about the effects of gratitude in our lives. And we've also talked about the enemies of gratitude that we face that we must guard against. 
Let's close by talking about some experiments in gratitude, some simple actions or practices that we can do every day, every week to help us be more grateful. Number one, we can write our blessings down, write things for which we are thankful. Maybe count your blessings sounds a bit daunting, but only a handful will do. And you could put them on simple cards and drop them in a gratitude jar or begin entering them into a journal that you can then go back and read and, and derive encouragement from that. I received this text message uh, from a lady in our church, a sister in Christ, uh, several weeks ago. She said, I've been trying to write down at least five things a day that I'm thankful for. She said, big things and little simple things like a cold glass of clean water to drink. This is what she said. It is absolutely amazing, the encouragement uh, going back and reading those, the encouragement that she gets from going back and just looking at all the things that she wrote down over a period of time she was grateful for. Maybe that's a practice that you'd like to try, one that would greatly benefit you. How about the second word we talked about, right? How about express? When you feel grateful, express that in either written or spoken words. I love this Facebook post that I read several years back from a preacher named Wes McAdams out in Texas, and I've changed a little bit of the language around to fit what we're talking about tonight. He says, consider grateful a grateful thought a debt that you owe from the moment that you think it until the moment you speak it. As soon as a grateful thought about someone pops into your mind, tell yourself, this doesn't belong to me. It belongs to them. Send a text write a card, or give them a call quickly before you forget to pay up. You never know how passing along an expression of gratitude might change their day, and I would add, even change their life. So write down what you're grateful for, express it. Maybe you want to spend some time reflecting. On mission trips, we would do these ac this um, evening activity called a powwow. And a pow was something that happened during the day that was negative or discouraging, and a wow was something that you viewed as a blessing. Maybe that's something you want to try just by yourself or even with your family at the end of the day. Spend some time reflecting on the day that you have just lived and pull out, run a magnet uh, over that day in your mind and uh, pull out the filings of uh, whatever events you're grateful for from that day. Finally, but um, you know, last but certainly not least, we should pray. We should write, or we can write, express those grateful thoughts, reflect on the experiences for which we're grateful, but most importantly, pray. We need to start thanking God more often for the blessings that he provides, and let's do that right now. Father, we come before you, and we acknowledge that the gifts and the blessings that we experience from your hand are innumerable, that we can never name them all. But Father, help us to try. Uh, help us to never neglect an opportunity to express to you specifically that which we are grateful for. Father, you've been so good to us, and the best gift of all is the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. And we thank you for him, for his life and death and resurrection. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. We hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving with your family this week, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Be blessed.